Welcome to Noonday Prayer on Friday the 23rd. We'll begin on page 103. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. We'll continue with Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with songs of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Well, our scripture assignment uh, for today is uh, a wonderful piece in 1 Corinthians. And I remember when I was in seminary, um, my, one of my professors said, how would you define what is the content of the gospel? What is the content of the good news? You know, in, in a few words. And I remember scratching my head for a while, but he pointed us to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, because this is St. Paul saying, this is what I preached. This was the good news I brought to all these different places, all over first uh, Israel, and then into Turkey, and into Greece. This was the gospel I preached. Now, I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved. If you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you as of First importance, what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, which is Peter, and then the twelve, the disciples, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep, as in they have died. Then he appeared to James, that would be Jesus' brother, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unworthy to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we preached and so you believed. So really, uh, what was it that Paul distills as the essential word of the gospel that we stand on? That Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to all those different groups of people. That is the, what we call the kerygma, the thing that was preached. Um, I think if you'd asked me before I had read that, what do I think the gospel is? It's that God loves us. There'd be a number of ways that I would have said, this is what the gospel is. 
But it's very interesting that Paul says it's the fact that this son of God died for our sins, died and was raised. It sort of highlights the importance of the risen Lord, of the risen Lord and his appearance, that we stand in that, that our ability to behave in different ways, that our ability to be renewed hinges on accepting that preaching. So I commend this passage to you. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11, to just meditate on and maybe even see to what degree you permit yourself to believe in the good news that Jesus rose bodily from the grave and that all these different people said, yeah, I, I saw him, I was with him, I know that happened. And that means that God is on the move in the world in a way that makes a difference. We continue on saying together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> and let our cry come to you. And let us pray now for members of our congregation in body, mind, and spirit for their encouragement. We pray for Jim, Lisa, Isabel, Hensley, Billy, Mary McGee, Elliot, Jackson, Carol, Carrie, Kenny, Barbara, Avon, Kenny, George, Emily, George, Harrison, and Kate. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>